The original Final Fantasy VII is tied up there with my top three favourite games amongst The Witcher 3 and Breath of the Wild, but the 2020 remake I really did enjoy. However, I'd call it more of a reimagining, to be honest. Story elements are drastically changed from the original game, and there was some Destiny story elemental bullcrap, which for me felt very unnecessary, and I think it's just a cheap way to just throw original Final Fantasy fans off of the scent by giving a new story. I mean, I'd have been happy with a completely faithful one-to-one -one remake of the original story of Final Fantasy VII, but I don't know, they, I, I think they just wanted to make the story as convoluted as Kingdom Hearts, to be honest. Now, I completed uh, the Final Fantasy VII Remake originally in 2020 on PS4, and I have only just beaten the integrated version on the PC. Now, the game for me is a solid uh, JRPG, um, with a good story, uh, besides the convoluted bollocks at the end of the game. Uh, great characters with plenty of side characters getting fleshed out, like Biggs, Wedge, and especially Jesse. Ah, Jesse. This game really did make me fall in love with Jesse, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> uh, the combat is, uh, is a great... Uh, it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun mixing up action and strategy and the ability to be able to swap between characters for different situations, give them orders to use abilities, magic or items. Tifa's attacks are pretty cool, being able to string together a punching combo, then a whirling uppercut, and then quickly select the ability to be able to do the dive kick. You can create some really awesome combos with each character. Even Aerith is fantastic with her magic. The exploration is good, obviously limited, more linear than the more recent RPGs, but um, Midgar is brought to life amazingly, and the monster designs have been, uh, again, brought to life um, looking amazing, even though in 97 um, we thought the monsters looked good then, as it was the first Final Fantasy in 3D, but now... They just look phenomenal. Now, there are side quests uh, in within the different areas and uh, a VR challenge room that you can unlock towards the end of the game. And then once you beat the game, you can select which chapter you want to go to. There's also uh, loads of different mini games that you can partake in as well. So there is uh, there is a lot to do. Um, not too much. It's not like ram packed like The Witcher, but... There is still uh, stuff there for you to explore and just expand upon in Midgar. Now, the game is split into 18 chapters, 20 including the integrated section, but I'll, I'll get to that bit soon. Now, I'm sure everybody already knows the story already. A mercenary called Cloud joins Avalanche, a group of people fighting back against the greedy and corrupt Shinra Electric Company by blowing up Midgar's reactors as they are draining the Earth of Mako. Now, along the way, Cloud meets Aerith, a mysterious and important young woman, and, uh, well, the other heroes get wrapped up in helping her, and they set out to save the world from Meteor. Now, of course, that's just that's more going to be in line with the other remake parts. I think there's going to be three in total. Um, Rebirth is coming out in, in 2023 uh, for the PS5, and then it will come to PC uh, a little ways afterwards. I won't play it until it comes to PC, but I can wait. I'm patient. Now, I only have three gripes with the game. One is that there is padding where there doesn't need to be, and the, cha the chapter's structure, I think, is a bit lame. I'd have preferred a more natural, cohesive, um, kind of like structure, like like RPGs normally have, you know? Um, like I think it would have been much better if they'd have crafted Midgar with the sections that they want that's relevant to the story and maybe a, a, a different sector that you could go to that we wasn't able to go to in the original game and have them linked up via um, via highway so you can use the bike a bit more and for travel and traversal. Well, I don't know, that might be a bit too much to put in there. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought it could have been a bit more open world and a bit more modern. Um, but, uh, also, um, the the other thing is that the PC port does suffer from frame drops here and there, uh, regardless of whether your PC is high-end or not, or whether you turn the graphics down or not. Um, it, it's just the kind of there. I think there are fan fixes. I don't really muddle in fan fixes, if I'm honest. But I think you can sort it out. There's no way for you to be able to, to customize the, the screen tearing. Uh, whatsoever in the options. The options for the graphics are very limited. Now, on a plus side, it does run great on the Steam Deck, locked to 30 frames per second, uh, but it's fully playable and awesome to play on the Steam Deck. Thank you. 
Now, onto the integrated part of the game, which was the extra DLC they put in for the PS5 release. Uh, it takes place around the middle of the main story um, and follows Yuffie, a young Wu-Tai ninja searching for Shinra's ultimate materia. Interestingly enough, in the original game, uh, Yuffie, like Vincent, uh, were characters that you could complete the game never even meeting or having in your party, which is pretty cool, you know, being able to play as her now as she has a very wicked fighting style that's very fast and flashy uh, it's now unfortunately this integrate is only two chapters long and it is basically a glorified fluffed out side quest of epic proportions <laughs> by uh, by which I mean not a lot happens besides some good character stuff and emotional stuff towards the end of it which I'm not going to spoil um, which I did think was done very, very well. It also introduces a cool mini-game called Fort Condor, which is like an active board game, utilising like rock, paper, scissors style mechanics with different units that are effective against other units. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, all, all in all, playing about half hour or so of Fort Condor and uh, doing all the main story of Integrate, uh, the two chapter section, it took me about two and a half, three hours to beat. So it's sure, it's good, but I don't think it was really worth the hype of them saying, yeah, it's only exclusive to PS5 and then later the PC release. I think it was just a bit uh, greedy on Square Enix's part, but let's be honest, that's what they are. So, yeah, if if Final Fantasy VII Integrate um, goes on offer on Steam or Epic um, for around about 20, 25 quid, absolutely, definitely uh, worth picking up. It's a great RPG, it's a great Final Fantasy game. Um, but I would not pay the four fifty sixty quid asking price uh, for a game that's nearly two, like three years old, um, and also has some issues on PC. Uh, so the greedy ass Sony and Square Enix can just stick that one right up their ass. But definitely worth picking up um, if you are a fan of Final Fantasy and if you've never tried it before. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Did it just talk? You asked what it. I am that which you see before you, nothing more. I'd appreciate it if we simply left it at that, agreed? <laughs>